All right, so nails are done. The date is commencing. The date was trash. He bought my drink, which was great. He didn't drink anything, not even coffee. Um, that was weird to me. Why are you going out if you're not gonna fellowship? And we literally like got into a back and forth at the like the the first date. We had already talked on the phone a few times, but like I just didn't really align with his thought process and it felt very young and immature, which is why I can't really do the young ones. I can't, I, can't, I just can't. And so I knew when I left <laughs> that was going to be the last date and it was. Um, and so what did we do in Durham so far? We went, we officiated the professorship, went and got my nails done by a black owned uh, nail salon uh, went to a black owned coffee shop, black on black on black on black, <laughs> and uh, went on a date that was the first and the last. Many first dates, y'all. Well, maybe I'll do a whole episode on that. So now it is loading day. I have to leave. So it never fails every city when I'm trying to find the stage door. I never know where I'm going. I have to like get here 30 minutes early just so that I can find the stage door and not get overwhelmed. This is my process for loading. I am so confused. I do this every time. And then uh, my friend at work, Kyle, like I'm always texting him like, where's the stage door? I have no idea. I always have to leave early because I have no idea. We make it to work and I have to turn this into something. I have to do some ratatata, a little razzle dazzle, which I do every, every single city. I make my office feel like home because uh, being on the road is hard enough and you really need to, um, you just gotta like, you gotta make things feel special so that it's not a drab. Every day is not gonna be easy. Every day is not gonna be easy. Every day is not gonna be easy. But if you can do little things that are just gonna make things just a better time for you or remind you of why you're doing what you're doing, you can really get through those humps. Uh, this is when I got a little, uh, I got a gift from uh, one of my friends at work. Uh, Emily got me a keychain. I always wear hats. I'm not wearing a hat today, but I wear hats very often. So she got me this little keychain um, to uh, celebrate me uh, because I am going to be designing, doing a makeup design for my first Broadway show. And then, I took many walks. I took many walks. The nature in Durham was everything. I really connected with nature in a way that I never thought that I would be able to. I took my fro out. Um, I just, I really just dived in. Then one of these nights we all went out, we went out to this bar and there was, um, a tower reader there and I got my cards read and I had like five questions and she was like ma'am we can do one these are all very very heavy questions and I we can just do one did a little fire pit moment and that was great now I'm heading to the river I went to the river often probably we were there four weeks I probably was at the river about three, four times a week and walking the trails, me and Biggie, and getting Biggie acclimated with nature because he's not even used to that. I put my feet in the river. I, my cousin came down to visit me. We did a, like a pilgrimage trip to Wilson, North Carolina, where we kind of retraced the steps of our grandmothers that are no longer with us. And we got really close and really deep um, in this process, like I urge anybody 
to take some sort of pilgrimage trip or journeying trip to be able to tap back into like who came before you and why you are where you are. And what was crazy is when we took this trip, there was, when you're driving in the South, there is a clear, you can literally tell when you're in a city or a small town that like you are not welcome. Um, and when we got to Wilson, a lot of things happened where we finally understood what our grandmothers went through and why they left. We ended up going to one of the places that they uh, would go eat uh, called Parker's. Uh, Parker's, we walked inside and uh, there was not a black person in sight and it felt like a pin dropped or a record scratched. Like, why are you in here? And when I asked for takeout, they said it's around the back, round back. I go round back, we go round back and there's a clear difference. And that's where all the black people were ordering takeout. And it was that moment. And I looked at the bathrooms back there and I looked at the condition and what the takeout looked like. And then, um, I had turned, I had turned behind me and, um, I saw like all the tables and stuff and I saw, uh, uh black people out there eating and, um, I ain't never seen nothing like that being from, uh, New York downstate in particular, New York City, Long Island. I ain't never seen nothing like that. And when you could feel the energy of segregation, when you can look at a structure and know that there was a sign there that said coloreds only, And when there's a level of fear, when people are looking at you and you see in the sun, you see in the sun is gonna set. Me and my cousin, we looked at each other and we said, we gotta get our food and we gotta go. We were so scared. And that was a moment that I just, I needed that. I needed to feel that because I ain't never, and it, it's furthering my mission. The fact that this is still happening, it's 2024. And the fact that this feeling can still come over me is wild, excuse me. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to walk the land where my grandmother, my Nana was raised and really feel that energy. Um, it changed everything for me, uh, especially when it comes to womb healing and sacred womb health. And, and me and my cousin are now connected in a way that we, um, our relationship has gotten even deeper. And so we did that, we did the pilgrimage, and then I started teaching. While we were in Durham, I taught my first class. Um, I worked out a little bit, I have a membership at Lifetime, and so the cities that have a Lifetime, I go in and I do my basketball exercises and I just, I just vibe out. Then I went out and tried um, some Nigerian food with one of my friends that travels with us on the road, David, and that was a vibe. Wearing my African cloths and uh, just being excited to be black and not being looked at funny. Like Raleigh Durham definitely had um, diversity and I felt extremely comfortable and felt extremely at home.
uh, while I was there. Ate some really, really good food, celebrated birthdays, went out with friends, and I took more journeys to the river. I put my feet in the river, y'all. I walked through the river, y'all. Whoever is watching that knows me like for real, for real, know how crazy that is. That's crazy. And I'll do it again and again and again. I had so much fun just being with Mother Earth. I never thought I would get here. I recorded some podcasts uh, because I was determined to get this thing out batch content did some journal entries i'll be dropping that very very soon i was able to get to the nail salon again (laughs) because i had to get ready for a photo shoot now i met a photographer um in durham uh and we were able to do a photo shoot and what's crazy is when i met him uh i was doing what i do and what i love to do is which is going to black owned coffee shops and he was standing over there and he was fly like fly chris is fly mad fly all right and so he had his rings he had the hat he had all the things and he had cameras around his neck and i was like mind you i wanted a photographer while we were in durham couldn't find a photographer i literally had one week left in Durham and I was like I guess I'm not gonna find my black photographer and I strategically in each city want to connect with black creatives and so I needed to connect with a black creative man God put them right there so I'm standing there and I'm like do I go do I go say something he cute that's a little intimidating do I want his number or do I want a photo shoot So I was like, I'm just going to go over there. So I go and we chop it up. I find out he's from Brooklyn. Um, uh, We were in alignment in a lot of different things. And so I was like, I'm trying to do this photo shoot. What's good? Let's get it done. And sure enough, we got it done. That Friday, we went into, um, we went into the river Uh, We had talked about all these other locations that we could have gone to. And then we had settled on going by the Enos River, which is so crazy because that's where I spent most of my time when I was in Durham. And so here we are, um, here I am doing a fitting and sending him videos of the fitting and what I was doing with my hair and all the things so that he can get a sense of a vibe we collaborated so much um from hair nails what my makeup would look like all of the things like and we came up with a really great story but before we had to do the shoot i had to go speak at a school so i went to go speak my friend nathaniel had a hookup at a school and invited me to come speak about my journey on broadway and just my journey in general as a makeup artist in the industry and so here i am talking to the little kiddos i love giving back and talking to the youth because i did not know that a job like this even existed and to know that people have been doing this for years and i had no idea like there's a whole lineage of makeup artists that work in Hollywood and entertainment and in theater. And I had no idea that this was even available to me. Like I go back into schools and I talk about it all the time, all the time. So now I'm here. Uh, We are headed to the river. Listen, it was a scene. This is some footage of us trying to get a shot in the river and I was trying to get BTS too. Everything falling all over the place. It's just, I don't, it's it's a mess. Look at me trying to be Mother Eartha. Trying to be cute, sexy in the water. One thing that 
uh, Chris does is he will make sure that you are being yourself behind the camera. He be like, forget all that other stuff. Like, what is you doing? <laughs> ah! Oh man. This is us getting some shots in the woods. Oh, it was such a great experience. Like Chris photographed me so well, like, I never seen myself look like that. I never, like, there's something about having a black man as a photographer for me that like, for me to be able to see how a black man sees me creatively, it is just, it's one of the most beautiful things to experience. It really is. And now it's time to load out. We did the photo shoot. That was the Friday before loadout. And now I'm trying to get it all together. I got to sign another wall at a theater and leave my mark. And now it's time to get to the next city. I don't remember what the next city was. It's all becoming a blur at this point. It wasn't Greenville. Went to Greenville already before that. Nashville. It was Nashville. Was it? No, it was Louisville. It was Louisville. The next city was Louisville and then we went to Nashville. But I left my mark in Durham. I had a great time. Durham was a very pivotal moment in my journey in 2023. I have no complaints. Durham owes me nothing. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you comment below. And I wanna start giving more content like this, y'all. Like. I made a promise to myself that I was gonna do this and I wasn't gonna stop this time. Hold me accountable. If you wanna see stuff like this, let me know. Blow up the DMs on my Instagram, Tish underscore Ferguson. Hit the podcast at shebetrippin.com. Like, interact with me. Let me know what it is that's helpful. Is any of this even helpful or useful? And if you like what you're seeing, make sure that you like. Hit me with a like so I know and I'm gonna just keep showing up, even if it's just one of y'all. I'm here, I ain't going nowhere. And thank you for watching.